in a way I've almost become grateful that it happened because I think it's kind of like a definite trial for my life that'll kind of chew me up and spit me out stronger than I was before. I was at a funeral of a close friend of mine and on the last night we were driving back, the car crashed into a tree and I was thrown from the back seat into the front seat. I remember waking up in the hospital and they told me that I was paralyzed. That he had a complete spinal cord injury at the T3 level, which means that he had no sensation or motor function uh, below his upper chest. Vocal cords were paralyzed, my tongue was paralyzed, I couldn't eat or drink for like two and a half months. I couldn't talk. Then I had a breathing tube in my mouth for like three weeks, which was probably the worst part of everything. When someone's first injured, all they can see is what they've lost, uh, what they can't do, who they're not anymore. He's a free spirit, and the last thing he would ever want to feel is confined. 27 years old, really active person. You know, I like to, I like to play sports. I like, to, you know, I usually walked about 20,000 steps a day. I had a job as uh, managing a restaurant. I like to travel around the world and do stuff. So living in the city, not being able to use the public transportation. I mean, it's the hardships originally of being in bed and wanting to go to the bathroom and the bathroom's right there and then you just can't get up and go to the bathroom is uh, it's definitely something. Even though I have setbacks, I'm not giving up hope. First I started at Mount Sinai doing the exoskeleton and then I moved to the VA where I'm part of a rewalk clinical trial. So I do that three times a week, which is great and I definitely, I can feel the benefits and it's just good to kind of be standing up on my feet. The exoskeleton program that we have here at Mount Sinai I think it's critical. It's a robot that is kind of fitted to the outside of the body, which you know moves the legs and uh, allows someone to, to be upright and to move about. When you're first injured and you're sitting in a wheelchair, you're literally looking up at the world, and the world is literally looking down at you. And that is depressing. I can't underestimate the power of being able to stand up and look at someone eye to eye is beyond powerful. Mentally just being on my feet and moving my legs just kind of, it feels, you know, I feel whole again. I've been training for months, you know, with really no purpose besides just getting myself better and then out of the blue I'm told that I got to participate in this Fifth Avenue Mile, which is this prestigious race in Manhattan. It's the first year that they're going to have people in exoskeletons do it and for me one of the things I've lost is kind of being able to be competitive and you know in that play sports and do stuff like that so just being able to get out there and competing like everybody else. Peter went from not being able to talk or eat or even sit up in bed and a year later there he is crossing the finish line in an exoskeleton and actually winning the race. It's absolutely amazing. Anybody who's suffering from something that seems bleak and chronic you know I think it's important to not only just to keep pushing yourself, but to understand that the, you know, science and stuff is changing so fast that, you know, you should never not give up hope because in five years it's going to be totally different than it was. I, I believe, you know, once people are using it in their home, you know, I think this will you know, be transformative for people who have spinal cord injury.